When Johnny Gosh first disappeared, the West Point Police initiated a huge search involving several local law enforcement agencies. But as the department's theory about what may have happened evolved, Johnny's parents criticized the investigation and hired their own private investigators in hopes of bringing their son home. And for police, this is anything but case closed. KCCI's Todd Magel found out what's happening to find closure 40 years later. Our ultimate goal is to bring closure to everybody that knew and loved Johnny. Johnny Gosh has been missing for 40 years, vanished from his Sunday morning paper route in West Des Moines. Since that day in 1982, West Des Moines police have been working to find him. It's one of the oldest investigations in the department's history. This particular case, it is still open and active at this time. Um, we do have detectives that are assigned to this case and they do periodically still review that case file. Um, we do receive tips and leads occasionally uh, multiple times a year. Um, of course, we have to vet those tips and make sure that they're credible. Uh, we need to look through all of those things. Um, a lot of times they end up not being credible or they could be hearsay. Um, and sometimes there are tips and leads that we've already followed up on in the past that the public may not be aware of. So there's a lot of aspects to this case that we can't really comment on because the case is still open. Police can't say what those tips are. They can't say if they think Johnny is still alive. They can't say if they have any theories about what happened that day. Being as the case is still open and detectives and the other law enforcement agencies are still actively working it, um, we don't comment on any theories that we might have in the case at this time. It's no surprise that after 40 years, West Des Moines police have a lot of evidence in the Johnny Gosh case. They can't show us that evidence, but for the first time in four decades, they can show us where that evidence is right here in the West Des Moines Police Department. Here's an exclusive look at the secure West Des Moines Police Evidence Room. Inside, on a top shelf 20 feet in the air, four storage boxes marked Johnny Gosh, each filled with physical evidence from that September day in 1982, and days, weeks, months, years since then. It's a powerful reminder that the investigation is an old case, but not a cold case. These cases are very important to keep that evidence uh, intact and to keep it preserved. Um, we may end up getting a lead at some point in the future where that evidence is critical uh, to bring closure to this case. But West Des Moines Police Sergeant Jason Heights admits solving the Gosh case is a challenge. With the, the size of this case and the, and the time span that's gone by since this case began, sometimes it takes a long time to go through those case files and many of our detectives now are retired or deceased or they're aging and those resources are starting to disappear that had intimate knowledge of the case in the past so it does take a little more effort but with technology and digitizing these cases now we're working on those things and trying to keep it moving as efficiently as we can we do have an active case for johnny gosh uh, here at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. John Bischoff is Vice President of Missing Children at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. The Johnny Gosh case is one of many that prompted Congress to form the nonprofit organization in 1984. It works hand in hand with law enforcement, and Bischoff says many law enforcement techniques and technologies have changed since then. Time is of the essence, and it is one of the bigger things that have changed over the years. But believe it or not, even today, we're fighting with that perception from the public that there is some perceived waiting period when that is absolutely not the case. Noreen Gosh lobbied the Iowa legislature to force police to act more quickly after Johnny's disappearance. It's called the Johnny Gosh Bill. And that ensures that there's an immediate investigation. No more waiting 72 hours. You don't do that on a bank robbery. Why would you for a human being? It's very critical to try to find a child or a missing person within that first 24 hours is, is really the window when to work on that. And those things have changed over time. Um, things are different now, investigative practices are different now, and reporting is different now. Another big change, instead of milk cartons and signs painted on trucks, the internet and other high-tech tools have revolutionized the way missing kids are investigated. Back then, uh, it was difficult to share information in an expedited fashion. Uh, now we have certain things such as Amber Alerts, we have the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, we have social media outlets, and a whole host of other technology that can help us work these cases in a more expedited fashion. In the last 30 years, the FBI reports missing children cases have dropped by 40 percent, but that's cold comfort when so many cases remain unsolved. Uh, it doesn't matter that uh, 40 years have passed. We'll still continue to look for Johnny Gosh, uh, and until told otherwise, until proven otherwise, we won't stop. The goal that we have is to bring him home and reunite him with his family. 
And we hope that someday that happens and we'll do everything that we can to assist that process. And that's KCCI's Todd Magel reporting. Johnny's disappearance happened really close to those who would investigate his case. It did. 40 years ago, the West Des Moines Police Station was less than one mile from his house at Valley West Drive and Ashworth Road.